The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny. Yeah. Well then, Bunny, 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 Bunny. This week on the podcast, we are once again doing a sequel episode. Oh, how many sequels we have discussed over the last two and three fourth years, huh? Man, so many sequels we've done. We've just done so many sequels. How so many? very many sequels. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, our first sequel episode was episode 28.5 when we discussed the little-known Disney film Victory Through Air Power 2. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. See, the original How did I forget Victory... That? Yeah. The original Victory Through Air Power was about the future of aerial combat as it pertains to World War II and defeating Nazi Germany, whereas the sequel took it in a different uh, road. It was about a young orphan girl's quest to save her sister from the evil Shadow Queen. A bit of a departure. Yes. A bit. The music was beautiful. Uh, The next sequel episode that we did was episode 37, where we took an in-depth look at the film Rock of Ages 2, to rock two ages. (laughs) Where Tom Cruise's Stacy Jacks gets into grunge in the 90s, then gets into heroin, and then he blows his brains out with a shotgun, set to the song of What's Going On by Four Non Blondes. Yet again, another Four Non Blondes reference. That was an amazing scene. It was a powerful scene. Yes. It was a powerful scene. What's going on? (sighs) And of course, recently, we covered the legendary sequel Casablanca 2, Return to the Time Sphere. Yes. Now, although you had your problems with it, I was a defender, and I'm going to say it again. I personally thought that it was a bold decision on the director's part to have the sequel to Casablanca be set in a futuristic cafe in the year 2190. I appreciate filmmakers with unique visions. So I'm just I'm just saying cyborg bounty hunter on the run from space Nazis. I have appreciated the originality of it. Yes, but I'm just saying that casting Rick with Bobcat Goldwaith is, you know, kind of a mistake. Yeah, but I did like the uh, the black guy who makes the funny noises from Police Academy. I was happy to see yeah. him in this. Yeah. And and space balls. And space balls. No. Uh Amber just sent me a t- Text saying that I should save her number and I'm yes, texting her back. Her you can't tell me what to do. There. I, ap- I appreciate the originality of Casablanca to return to the time sphere. I mean, it did suck. I'm just saying I appreciated its uniqueness. Yes. And yeah, but- that, my unconventional conventionists yeah. Yeah. brings us to this week's film yet another sequel for the Bond film the 2007 Marvel film Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2 yes. or as it's called in French Le Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2 I don't know French but I do know a few languages I know Pig Latin I know yes I know the language of love, which is money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know uh, broken English. So that's like uh, uh, that's three languages right there. So yes. that's pretty good. Now, in our discussion of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which just started, I want to and can because it's our show. I want to skip right to the end of everything. Okay and discuss Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 because it was recently announced that James Gunn, trauma picture survivor and the writer and director of Guardians of the Galaxy numbers 1 and 2, he will in fact be coming back for the third film. And this is so big. Yeah. This is, is an all important this is an all important first for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No director has directed All three films in a Marvel trilogy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. John Favreau, 
directed Iron Man and Iron Man 2 Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. But Iron Man 3 was written and directed by Kiss Kiss Bang Bang director Shane Black, who has a keen eye for fast dialogue, crime thrillers, and movies pointlessly set during Christmas. Yes. All three is why I love Iron Man 3. (laughs) Such a difference from the other Iron Mans. Iron Man 3, freaking love it. Thor... The first Thor movie was actually directed by William Shakespeare. Yes. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? William Shakespeare. Uh, Kenneth Branagh. There you go. Yes. Uh, Thor 1 was directed by William Shakespeare. Thor 2 was directed by Alan Taylor, who was actually famous in the mind of the mom of Alan Taylor. <laughs> And maybe Sarah Jessica Parker. He directed a lot of episodes of Sex in the City, which is why he was perfect for Thor 2 Get Thorier. Yes. And now for the third Thor film, what we do in the shadows director, Taiki Wakanda Waka Waka, yes. is directing Thor 3 Super Troopers in Space, which <laughs> will feature an all star. Star-studded cast, including the Incredible Hulk, Doctor Strange, Jeff Goldblum, and an 85% chance of one or both members of Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Which I am very excited about. All right, band meeting. Mm. Thor. Well, I'm obviously here. I'm right in front of you. Yes, but you have to say that you're here. Well, why do I have to say that I'm here? Because I'm taking notes. This is an important meeting, (laughs) Thor. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> I've got to take these notes. So I'm 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 just gonna have to start again. Thor. I'm here. I'm obviously here. I'm right in front of you. Okay, I'm just gonna skip you. Bruce Banner. Present. See? That's how you do it. Well, yes, I wanted to be professional. <laughs> Unlike Thor, I wanted to be professional. Well, thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Avengers and Avengers 2 Super Robot Go Go Fun Time yeah. were both directed by Joss Whedon. And I just want to say, fuck Joss Whedon. And um, not because I hated Buffy. I never really watched it, so I can't say I hated it. Yeah. I just hated those few people who were obsessed with it. <laughs> just be. But but nothing against Buffy. I never watched it, so I can't say that I hated it. And not because Joss Whedon is a fake feminist. Have you heard all the stories about Joss Whedon lately? No, I have not. But I've always I've always had a a theory that Joss Whedon Joss Whedon in just about everything he's done has put in a form of the girl next door. Yeah, you know the cute, mousier chick. Yeah, you know, which you have. You have. Oh God, what is her name? She played Willow on Buffy. Yeah, really. Yeah. Ad- yeah. Uh, how you met? How I met your mother. She's in that Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I love her for. Um, yeah. you know. Really cute, really innocent looking, you know, red hair, red, red or brownish hair seems to be the thing. And then I believe that we can trace her. We could trace Willow and then go into um, Kaylee from Firefly. Yep. Who was basically the same character. There were certainly differences. Uh, Basically the same kind of character, though. Sweet, innocent, you know, things like that. Um, Dollhouse, never watched it. Um, Dr. Horrible, getting Felicia, what's her face? Yeah. Definitely the same type. And Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. I, I think Scarlett Johansson is the one that is going to die in the next Avengers movie, and then her body is going to turn green and she's a scroll. Just want to say it now. Mm. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to... They have announced that after Avengers 3 that there's going to be a Captain Marvel movie starring Envy Adams, 
and it's going to be set in the 90s and it's going to feature skrulls and i thought why are they going to be bringing skulls in a flashback the only reason they would bring skull scrolls thank you in right. a flashback film is if somehow it affected the present so i'm assuming that avengers 3 ends with um a, the beginning to the secret invasion storyline in Marvel movies where um, a, a major character dies and then the body turns green and it's a scroll. So now scrolls are out here. Scrolls can turn into anybody. Literally any one of the heroes could secretly be an alien. And that's what the next film is going to be about. Hmm. I think a character is going to die and secretly be a scroll, and I think it's Scarlett Johansson. Not saying that Scarlett Johansson is gone from the Avengers movies because they need to keep her body alive somewhere. So yeah. she's still around. It's just that she was a scroll for an indefinite period of time. I think it was her. Hmm. I just want to say this now. It's um, the end of August 2017, and I'm calling it now. Okay, but hold on. Now, can I put a little bit of input in here? Yes. Let's talk about why it's her. Primarily because Marvel movie. hates because Marvel hates women. I mean, Marvel could have had a huge jump on DC and beat beat them to the Wonder Woman punch if they just would have given Scarlett Johansson a, a movie of her own. Yeah. Was yeah. That uh, no, see, and that's that's where I'm getting at is like they hate women. Society hates women. If you look. I actually just came across the post on Tumblr the other day about every every group of heroes or every whatever, there's only one female to represent our entire gender. Yeah. Because apparently people are pissed off about Steven Universe and how Steven Universe is literally the only male character on the show. Yeah. Ah, okay, no, main character? Yeah, the dad doesn't count. There is no male Jim on the show, and they're throwing a hissy fit. But you know what? That must suck for guys. What show is this? To it's a, it's a cartoon on uh, Cartoon Network called Steven Universe. Um, we've been watching a lot of it lately. Yeah. But, like, seriously, it must suck for guys to realize that they're the only they only have one male to represent their entire gender mm -hmm. in a show full of females because that's how women are. That's yeah. how we feel. And also... The show's literally named after him. None of the fucking shows that have one female character is named after the female character. Yeah, it's not like Avengers. It's okay, like, but I, 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 I won't I won't say that you're wrong, but um, you're wrong. there's a little bit more to it when it comes to like comic book hero teams. Well, you know, what is there to because to the because it's 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 more separated. More <laughs> Well, you need a really fast guy. You really need a really strong one. You know, you need something that's 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 like furry or made of steel. Something and women like can't that. be those things? Huh? Women can't be those things? Uh, no. Why? It was part of the comic book code. And the comic book code is... Me bullshitting my way out of it now. Yeah. yeah, it is you bullshitting your family. <laughs> because um, She-Hulk right there, that's just kind of like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know? She's she's super strong. Yeah. She's She-Hulk. So that's not, you know what I mean? I would like to interject and say that I was going to say that I think that Black Widow is the one because in the movie poster she has blonde hair. I'm saying it's because Marvel hates women and they've got to kill her off. I think it's because they've like, they've they they've always had in this movie. That's just weird. <laughs> they've always had a hard on against uh, against Black Widow. That's why there yeah. there are not Black Widow. Because the child thinks this is an absolute fucking emergency. What? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. She, Natasha has to go and take care of him. Oh. Um. It's you know, she didn't get. She wasn't part of any of the toy lines or anything like that. Yep. You know, and, and there's no damn good reason for it. Yeah. So to kill her off, I, I could see that. But that's part of the reason why. They just hate Black Widow for some reason. Yeah. But um, 
Joss Whedon apparently got a divorce a few years ago. And so Joss Whedon's wife wrote a blog post about how basically Joss Whedon was like, hey, wife of Joss Whedon. I love you and you're the only woman for me. Now I'm going to go make this movie now. Hey, girls, I'm Joss Whedon, feminist. I love women and I have a wife who loves me very much. Who wants to fuck me? <laughs> and he was just banging a bunch of women on yeah. the sets of his movies, people who worked for her, uh, other actresses. And he was basically using his wife as a shield like, hey, I love women. Did you see that uh, Entertainment Week Weekly called me a feminist? Yes, and I'm married and I love my wife. Oh, that's man. bad. So she got really pissed, and when she learned about that, that's when she realized, oh, my God, he's just using feminism as a shield to bang as many women as he wants. <laughs> Fuck Joss Whedon. So now people really hate him, like hate him hard. But yeah. that is not the reason why I hate him. Not because of Buffy, not because he's a fake feminist who uses feminism to bang women. What is with his first name? <laughs> I'm so pissed about this. Joss? What the hell is that? Yeah. I'm so, I've, I've hated his names. I, I just want to kill his name. I just want to get his first name and strangle it to death. Yeah. Well, Natasha said, Natasha said that he was named after two people, one named Jess and one named Josh. And they combined them together. Yeah. To come with the name Joss. I thought that the parents who gave birth to him all had a lisp. <laughs> so it's like, okay, let me uh, let me fill out this birth certificate. What do you want the kid's name to be? Yes, I want him to be named Joff. <laughs> you want him to be named what? Joff. I want him to be named Joff. It it really it, it's really not a name. It's a Matthew McConaughey character. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, okay, Joss, why don't you go hang out with Orpa? Yeah. <laughs> Orpa Winfrey. But my but my hate for Joss Whedon, except for really loving his work, um it was there was this movie, I think it was called Captive, I'm not sure. This was about this was this was when, when um torture porn was really hot. Yes. Saw and hostile and things like that. And and Captivate had um the chick from twenty four, the daughter. Yeah. Okay. The blonde. Yes. And yeah. they put up this and I really did not like torture porn. You know? I just felt it was kind of nothing to grab on to, you know? It's just Hostile is just oh okay these people are getting tortured that's the plot you know what I mean yeah uh so I was already looking for this genre to go away and Captivate had put out this huge billboard somewhere in Hollywood and there was this huge controversy oh kids can see it and things like that and and uh Joss Whedon wrote uh, an article that just ripped the movie because of the poster. And I was like, man, are you doing their advertising for them? You know, I want this to yeah. die. Now this piece of shit movie, which it really looked in particular, a piece of shit. Yeah. This piece of shit movie is going to make a lot of fucking money. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not helping matters. Yeah. Yeah. And you were causing that Joss Whedon and you were causing that everybody else who complains. <laughs> Joss, who names their fucking kid Joss? What the hell is wrong with you? Belly, you need to get to bed. It's 15 minutes past your bedtime. My hatred of Joss Whedon clouded the fact that you have a bedtime. But you have to get to bed. I know you can hear me. You know what it sounds like? Jaws. It sounds like a particular type or style of bit that you would put into a horse's mouth. 
Nice. I was thinking that he was named after the Johns the the Justin High School Ring Making Company. Yeah. Justin's. <laughs> Justin. So they just named him Joss. So Joss Whedon. And while we're on the subject of uh, feminism in comic books, I am really hoping that the upcoming Justice League movie adheres to the comic books because Wonder Woman was added to the Justice League only as a secretary. Yeah. So how great would it be to be a, yes, we all must band together to defeat Darkseid. Hey, Wonder Woman, get us coffee. (laughs) Can't do, boys. And she just like goes off in her high heeled shoes to go get coffee for Batman. (laughs) (laughs) That's just been a dream of mine. Yes. So Joss Whedon, fucking Joss. I'm calling him Josh for the rest of the episode. Josh Whedon. Uh, directed Avengers and Avengers 2, Super Ro- Super Robot Go Go Fun Time. But Avengers 3 is being directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, who were also the co-creators of the uh, show Community. Yeah. Which is why Captain America, the first one, was directed by Joe Johnston, who also directed The Rocketeer. Which is why, if you squint... The first Captain America movie is basically the Rocketeer. (laughs) Yeah. If you watch the first Captain America and squint, you're like, oh, oh, my God, this is the Rocketeer. (laughs) Disney really holds on to their directors. This is kind of impressive. But Abed is in Captain America, too. And the Dean is in Captain America Civil War. (laughs) Also, this is unrelated, but Troy Barnes is in Spider-Man Homecoming. So I can only assume that in Avengers 3, Chang and or Annie Edison will have some part in Avengers 3. That would be nice. Wait a second. You think that Thanos should have the Infinity Stones? Do you realize how foolish you sound right now? Uh, uh, What else do you believe in? Blood transfusions? That's if they get Troy to be in Avengers 3. Like, (laughs) you know, just, just to be clear. So having James Gunn, yeah. come back to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3 means that for once in the Marvel Cinematic Universe we will actually we may actually get a coherent style through a trilogy of Marvel films that is a mm-hmm. big ass deal you see Iron Man 1 and see Iron Man 3 those are totally different films yeah. Thor 2 and 3 Jesus fucking Christ the yeah. difference in the Thor movies is like I am actually planning on making an Incredible Hulk two and making it a musical. <laughs> well, Let's make but, it a musical. But it, when it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy, I mean, God damn it, that first movie just hit every note exactly right. So you've got a yep. franchise on your hand, and it's like, look, it's perfect. Don't fucking do anything to it. Just make another one. You yep. know, and so I, and yeah, I read, to keep James Gunn. I mean, I can't imagine anybody who could take it over yeah. without tanking I'm, it. I'm, and I'm so proud of Marvel because Marvel said, James Gunn, we want you to make this Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And James Gunn went. Are you sure about that? Because I am James Gunn. And they're <laughs> like, no, 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 we trust you write the movie, direct it, you'll be great. And he's like, okay, I here you go, I wrote this script. And then they read it and say, we want it to be more James Gunnier. (laughs) And he's like, still, are you sure? I am James Gunn. Are you sure about that? And they're like, no, go really all out on the James Gunnishness of this film. And they're like, and he's like, okay, but uh, all right, I'll make it as James Gunn as I can. But and he then didn't... he did, and it was a hit, and it's still, I'm blown away by the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Don't know how it happened, just happy that it did. He, But he didn't have a James Gunny-ish yet. You know, I mean, yeah. 
the dude was still working on getting out there and he's done a good job getting out there and getting out for, yeah. from trauma. So and like, yeah. like, like as, as, as James Gunny guardians of the galaxy is, is cause he took Michael Rooker from slither. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but that is an actual quote from James Gunn that Marvel said, you need to make this more of a James Gunn film. Is the is the actual quote? Okay, and good it's like job, wow, though. yeah, good on Marvel for that because you definitely saw something there that nobody else would have ever seen. No, you know, you no, know. it was very much like Peter Jackson getting Lord of the Rings or fucking Sam Raimi getting the first Spider Man movie. Yeah, it was yeah. like, have you seen the movies these people done? Have you seen Meet the Feebles? Yeah, yeah, oh, God, <laughs> I love that sodomy song. You're 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 giving the Lord of the Rings to the Meet the Feebles guy? Are you yeah. kidding? And then Sam Raimi. I mean, Sam Raimi didn't do much, although he was developing more of a style at that point. Yeah, you know, but he did Evil Dead and Dark Man. The only oh, God, I love Dark Man. <laughs> Sam Raimi was like, I want to make a Batman movie. And Warner Brothers are like, hell no, you're Sam Raimi. We don't trust you around any comic book movies. And no one ever will. Give me the elephant. The elephant. And Sam Sam Raimi's like, okay, fine. I'll make my own comic book character. I'm going to call him Batman. Oh, shit, that's taken. Dark Man. The man of the dark. Mm -hmm. And you know who else? You know who I'll get to star in it? Liam Neeson. Call me crazy. I think he might be a good action hero. Yeah. And I know Francis no one else McDormand. agrees with me. I know no one else agrees with me. Call me crazy. But I kind of like Liam Neeson fighting bad guys. <laughs> He'll add some wolves in the film. No, that's too much. No one will ever pay to see Liam Neeson fight wolves. But yeah, fighting bad guys. I'm currently working on a treatment for Ant-Man 3. It's going to be a Western. Yes. Just because it's a different director, so we're really going all out there. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. This is the 15th Marvel Cinematic Universe film, if you count Spider-Man Homecoming. It continues the story of Peter Quill, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Star-Lord, and his mysterious family life. Apparently, mysterious family life means Peter Quill's mom and dad fucked in the woods behind a Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah. His dad, apparently, like, who is his dad? Is his dad some sort of a god? Is his dad some sort of a mystical being? No, his dad is the star of the legendary 1969 Disney film, The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. I was I was really wondering if that was the connection, Um, because like I'm so straight because really at that point in Disney films, Kurt Russell and Jan Michael Vincent were completely reversible. Jan Michael Vincent calling on this January. It's time to Michael up your Vincent. Mm-hmm. It, it it would not it would not make a difference which one you cast in any of those movies. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh uh what's his name? He he signed a 10-year contract with Disney in like the 60s/70s. So it was it was really nice to see him again in a in a technically in a Disney film. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was nice. But yeah, Peter Quill's mom and dad had a Dairy Queen blizzard each other in the woods. Mm-hmm. Dairy Queen blizzard being my new euphemism for doing the flibbity dibbity. But it makes sense for Star Lord, doesn't it? Make sense, Star Lord. You think about Star Lord, about who he is as a character. It makes sense that he would be like conceived in the woods or like in the back of a Chevy, or you know something like that, at the drive-in. Yeah, yeah. that is no, that makes that makes absolute sense. Those are the conditions that Peter Quill would be conceived under. Yeah. I'm just I'm just upset because in the comic books it turns into a whole thing because Peter Quill's dad is actually like the emperor of all of space, 
which yeah. makes him actual royalty, which is why he's named Star Lord. Uh-huh. And eventually, they they kick out like the the his dad, the Emperor, and they make him like the Emperor of all space, and and it's a whole thing. And that's what I was expecting to happen in the comic books. And then James Gunn is like, "No, I'm James Gunn. We're just fucking up everything. It's a whole <laughs> new plot line. Just just buckle up, okay?" Yeah. But yeah, no, the, the Yeah, I didn't the, read many of the comics. Well, that's the thing. There are different Guardians of the Galaxy in mm-hmm. different time periods. Anyway, um Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 begins with these golden skinned douchebags that are called the Sovereign. Now, don't be fooled, because the Sovereign psycho you. <laughs> That was the thing that bothered me the first time I saw Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, oh my god, the Sovereign. The Sovereign hired him. Oh my god, they stole from the Sovereign. From the Sovereign. Oh my god, now the Sovereign is killing him. Oh wait. Oh my god, none of this is about the Sovereign. What is all that crap about the Sovereign? Yeah. In the beginning, I thought this was about the Sovereign. They're hardly in this film. God damn it, they psychoed me. Yes. God damn it, it was Janet Lee all over again. <laughs> so you're led to believe in the beginning of the film, oh my god, the Sovereign, the Sovereign are getting him. When in fact, the Sovereign are only around to set up Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, yes. where we will finally get to see Adam Warlock. Yes. Not to be confused with my former favorite musician, rapper, and man crush, m- rapper Adam Warrock who has not released a new track since June of 2015. Yes. That man was a large part of my life. Yes, he was. God damn it. I I feel your pain. (sighs) Like I was, I was, I was so excited in the, in that end bit, the, that end credit scene where they met. I will call him Adam. Oh, there you go. The yes. Sovereign only exists to set up Adam Warlock. 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 I need to get used to saying Adam Warlock yeah. because for years I've been saying something different. God damn it, Adam Warlock. He was amazing. <laughs> I loved him and I'm so upset. He, he led you astray, basically. He did. He did. Yeah. And I'm upset about it. Yeah. But Guardians James Gunn Galaxy. just, uh, and really, it's not all James Gunn, but the yeah. whole look of the Sovereign world, you know? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, and the fighters, it's, it's yeah. they're fighting in video games. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, take that, Philip K. Penis. <laughs> but I, it's 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 a great movie. I love Mantis. God damn, I love Mantis. Yeah, and and the larger role that Kirk has. Yes, because Very much. James Gunn is the brother of Kirk from Stars Hollow, mm-hmm. and Kirk from Stars Hollow was on set playing. The green screened uh, rocket. Uh huh. And I'm like, okay, so that technically makes you one of the stars of the film. Also, you're hardly in the film. Yeah. That's got to kind of suck. That's got to kind of suck to be the green screened rocket, but no one will know you as the rocket. Well, that's as the rocket in this film. That's what, what the big stink over Gollum was a few years back at the Academy Awards. Yeah. For for yeah. for Andy Serkis not being nominated because like if you could say anything about fucking Lord of the Rings movies, his Gollum performance was amazing. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. But well, you're not a real character. Yeah, I mean three of the fucking movies. I mean, but at least Andy Serkis. <laughs> Did the green screen a motion capture and did the voice. Yeah. Kirk did the green screen and then Bradley Cooper just uh, flies in from the set of uh, Wet Hot American Summer. Yes. 
and does just the voice. And now everyone says, yes, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. And it's like, no, it was fucking Kirk who did most of the work. It was Kirk from Stars Hollow who did most of the fucking heavy lifting. Bradley Cooper just flew in, did some voiceover, and now he's the star of the film? I don't think so. Yeah, Kurt Kurt knows how to be a, a raccoon. Yeah. He like has he has his spirit animal is a raccoon. It's gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. So I was happy in this film, like finally Kirk has more. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Kirk from Stars Hollow to have more shit to do. You are a bigger part. Good for you, Kirk. But even that character is a great fucking character. <laughs> Captain oh, got yeah. to do stuff. Captain, Captain got to teach stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, yeah. I love that fucking line in the first movie. That's like my favorite line in the first movie. Yeah. But, but... Let me tell you the one thing that I am happy that I'm the happiest to see in this film. Okay. Sylvester Stallone. I found that a disappointment and and and, and no, that's no, 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 no. But, here's the thing. but here's the thing. When I heard that there was a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I you know, I, I had already read a lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy comic books. And it's like, okay, so I already know Peter Quill and Drax and Gamora. I already know all these people. Oh, wait. How long have they been making Guardians of the Galaxy comics? They've been making this since the 70s? Oh, shit, I've only been reading these since the 90s. What the hell was happening in the 70s then? So I went and looked, and when Guardians of the Galaxy originally came out... For like a decade, Guardians of the Galaxy was an unpopular comic book that nobody read that featured entirely different characters. There was a guy made of ice, and there was a bandit, and there was a robot, and there was a giant red-finned, blue-skinned badass who led the Guardians of the Galaxy, and his name was Yondu, and he was the leader of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And he was, they were the Guardian of the Galaxy for a decade, and then Marvel just said, nobody's buying this shit, let's just cancel it. Yeah. So then in the 90s, they said, let's bring back the Guardians of the Galaxy, but this time, let's try and put characters people will give a crap about. <laughs> and that is the Guardians of the Galaxy that we know. That's when they came up with everything that they did for that first movie. So I was happy that they added Yondu into the first film, but at the same time, it's like, wait a second, this Yondu has this tiny little red thing on his head. He's supposed to have a huge red fin. Yeah. That is his signature style. Where is his huge red fin? And where's all the other guys? Where's the guy made of ice? Where's the where's the 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 Japanese long haired girl bandit character? Where's the robot? Yeah. So when I first saw Sylvester Stallone, I'm like, what the hell is Sylvester Stallone doing in this? And then it's like eventually it hit me. Holy shit, he's from the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Oh my god, he's from the original Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's why they do that little end one of the like 35 end credit scenes in this movie is Sylvester Stallone getting together with all of the original members of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, that's setting up the fact that there could be another Guardians of the Galaxy movie that does not feature the Guardians of the Galaxy we know. And there is talk of, like, having Sylvester Stallone have his own, like, subsect Guardians of the Galaxy movie, because technically they were the first. All I gotta say is they better hurry, you know? Yeah, they better hurry. He's old as shit. Yeah. Yeah. But that scene, okay? First off, whenever I see Stallone, it's just Stallone. You know? Oh, yeah, no, I hate Sylvester Stallone. I'm just excited about the fact that they're throwing back to the original Guardians of the Galaxy. But no, I fucking yeah. hate this man. Um, but then that scene, good Christ. Why? If you're making bad guys, leave them as bad guys. Okay? Yeah. Don't give me the, Rav- the Ravengers don't trade in kids. Of course they do. Yondo is in trouble because he didn't deliver Peter Quill. Yeah. 
there you go. Problem solved. Why did you have to do that to me? Yeah. I'm going to pause the podcast for a second because I need to go pee. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone is a prick. I'm just happy at the fact. Seriously, Eleanor? I'm just happy at the fact that they're finally um, calling back to the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, Yondu even gets his uh, big red fin. Uh And, um, oh my God. Um, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. I love that. (laughs) So much. (laughs) You look like Mary Poppins. Was he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. (laughs) And then apparently I didn't realize I follow Michael Rooker on Facebook. Uh, No, on Instagram. On Instagram. And he went to um, on vacation with his family to Disneyland. Yeah. And he's like, oh, there's Mary Poppins. I'm going to go take a picture of Mary Poppins. And it wasn't until he's taking a picture that he realized, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm Mary Poppins, (laughs) y'all. Like, that's great. He he deserves it, man, because he has been working for forever. You know, and like, yeah coming close to breaking through and then dropping back and doing anything he needs to do to make money. Yeah. You know, and then, and then almost breaking through again and then falling back. I mean, he, he was in Henry portrait of a serial killer. Yep. I think that was probably his first gig. Possibly. And he was pretty awesome in it as an actor, although I'm still kind of afraid of him for it. You know? Oh, hell yeah. Like, I would like to meet Michael Rich, uh, Michael Rooker, uh, but only if there are a lot of other people around. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, Agreed. And then he would pop up in this and that, and uh, he, had, he had a co-starring role in The Dark Half. Um, yeah. And he was one of a he was a player in JFK yeah and then he did like skeleton man 2 you know and some other shittier movies and then he got slither and then he got the walking dead and now he's got this i mean that's a lot of fucking years yeah. struggling you know yeah there's one question that I have about this movie. I was talking to Natasha about this earlier. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah. Peter Quill's dad, they're like, oh, who is his dad? It's some sort of ancient thing. We're not sure what it is. And then eventually they they learn that Peter Quill's dad is an ancient being called a celestial. Yeah. And that Peter Quill's dad is just wandering across the galaxy, wondering, am I alone in this world for (laughs) millennia? Am I alone in this world? But obviously, he was not, because there was another celestial. Peter Quill went into his head in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yes. Okay. But, here's the thing. Yes. You are oh my god, child. You're you're like taking Ego at his word. As far as you know, Ego could have killed that other celestial being. I mean Ego lied to his so own you're son saying, to try to yeah, get yeah, him okay. there. So you're saying like an unreliable, unreliable narrator, narrator here. Yeah. yeah. So I mean you don't know. He was probably just using that as a story to get Peter Quill, as we all know, who is sympathetic to people. You know, I mean, yeah. shows his humanity. Yeah. But he's probably just trying to get him on his side, being like, I'm alone, and I need somebody there. I need, you know. But yeah. they and were playing catch. How I can know. you say that? They were playing catch. You saw them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, 
I have questions. I have questions about the existence yeah. of the celestial head, which people are now living in from yeah. the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And mining. Yeah. And mining. Yes. So let's ravage up a small amount of stats here. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. It came out in May of this year, and I am still freaking out over the fact that it came out in May, and now we're in August watching the movie at home. Yes. I have not... Yeah, that I am, bothers me, too. Yeah, I, it, it, I don't know when I will get used to that, but, but that's just freaking weird. Uh, I, I really Ed thought it was going to be Christmas. Out, when Ed Wood came out, it came out in 2004, and it came out in video in 2005. But for the first year, it was just a rental. You couldn't buy it until no, it was 90. It came out in in theaters in 94. Yeah, it came out in video in 95, but you couldn't buy it on video until 96 because for the first year, it was only available as a rental. So you had to wait two years from the movie to come out until you could see it at home. Yeah. This movie came out in May, and I am able to watch it at home, and I'm never going to get used to that because that's just weird. Yes. Yes, it is. And just, especially for this. I mean, did they think it wasn't going to sell? Yeah. We better get it out there before, while they still remember the movie. You know, I mean, that's what that move feels like, where I, I was really, I, I just had to cross off my list until Christmas. Like, it's not going to yeah. come out until around Christmas. Yeah. So now I'm looking around like, am I, should I be expecting the Spider-Man movie to come out soon? I'm confused. Yeah. Really confused. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is currently the number four highest grossing film of the year. And it made about $100 million more than its remarkably out of less left field successful number one film. <clears throat> Interesting fact. I did not know this until I was doing my research. Ego, the living planet. Yeah. Technically, technically categorized a long time ago. As a Fantastic Four character. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. A lot a, a lot of Fantastic Four holdover, like the Skrull. Yeah. So there are deals going on that I think we might not know about, unless maybe you do. Is it Tasha who knows? I said no. I was asking if it was wrong to send a child's shirt uh, to to the hurricane victims that says "Mommy's Surfing Sweetheart." Ooh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so I should leave that one out of the donation. Do we have any? Do we also have any shirts that feature uh, uh, Noah and his ark? No, <laughs> that might also be. That might also be in a bad bad taste. Bad taste, yeah. A Sharknado shirt, I would keep away from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, okay, so I'll leave that one out. Yeah. <laughs> so Ego, the living planet, was a technically classified as a Fantastic Four villain, mean, meaning that it was owned by Fox. There were a number of characters that are owned by Fox that frickin' uh, James Gunn wanted his hands on, including Annihilus. Yeah. Uh, An Fantastic Four villain and um, Kang the Conqueror, the time traveling villain. Yeah. But then um, Fox started working on the Deadpool movie and they had, a, they were looking for mutants that weren't too popular that could be in the movie with Deadpool. They already had Colossus, but they were looking for someone else. Then they dusted off a character no one remembered. Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah. Who was named after a song from the band Monster Magnet. <laughs> and they're like, let's see, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. That's a great name. Maybe we should use her. But in the comics, she's a telepath. Uh huh. She has like mind powers and shit. So they're like, what if we could change her power? Can we do that legally? No, we'd have to go to Marvel. Okay, let's go to Marvel. Marvel, we want to change her powers. 
And Marvel's going, well, that's interesting, because I have a director that wants one of your characters. Maybe we could do a trade. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Fox gave Marvel Ego the Living Planet in exchange for which Fox was able to change Negasonic Teenage Warhead's powers in the Deadpool movie. Fox is going to have to cave sooner or later, just like Sony. Exactly. Exactly. What this shows me is that, God damn it, as much as people talk about this, eventually, I think I'm seeing Doctor Doom in a Marvel movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, down the road, that is happening. Let's all remember that people said, there's no way we'll ever see Spider-Man. Yeah. Let's all let's all just come to the fact that we're never seeing Spider Man. Okay. God damn it! I'm eventually, eventually gonna see Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom appear in the goddamn Marvel movies. Yeah. Do you know what that could possibly lead to? Dogs and cats living together. I really want to punch you. House of M. Oh God, that would be wonderful. That what? Would be wonder- House of M. House of That's M. That's yeah, a wonderful um um so Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are the the children of Magneto. Yes. That right there in its present form could not be done in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because yeah. they don't have Magneto. So Magneto gets Scarlet Witch and her like a uh, uh, reality altering powers to create an alternate world wherein Magneto is like the emperor of the entire planet. And Charles Xavier's dead. Yeah, Charles Xavier is dead, and basically every superhero in the world is kind of placated by being the who they always wanted to be. Okay. So Spider-Man is now, like, married to Gwen Stacy and has a kid and isn't a superhero. Captain Marvel's the most popular person in the world. Uh... Steve Rogers is now just an old man living his life. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, it's a great, it's a great little story. And then of course there's like the side comics that they release like one offs that take a more detailed look at the house of universe. It's really good, but eventually God damn it. Dr. Doom is going to pop up. Yes. Eventually. And make him look good. Please. Yeah. Yes. Make him look how he looks in freaking comic books. Now, I mean, let's I mean the about- fucking Roger Corman movie did a decent look in Doctor Doom. Yeah. The you Roger know? Corman movie made Doctor Doom look more like Doctor Doom than all of the big budget Doctor Doom uh, Fantastic Four movies did. And redo. That's a sad sentence to say. Redo his origin story. I mean, I haven't watched the Fantastic Four movie since the first one. Yeah. You know, redo that origin story. That origin story sucks. Yeah. Which one? Uh, Doctor Doom. Um. So let's talk a bit about Stan Lee. Okay. Stan Lee with uh, Stan Lee appears in every. Marvel movie. Yes. He appears in every single solitary Marvel movie in a different form, but he's in every single solitary one. So regardless of who has it. Yeah, regardless of who owns it and all that sort of thing. So e- eventually uh, I think you should say Marvel characters though. Because Marvel movie would suggest that it's by Marvel Studios. Yeah, re- but regardless of who owns it. Yeah. So Fox Marvel, Sony, Sony. Yeah. So a popular fan theory appeared, which said that Stan Lee was a watcher. Yes. Which are these big headed people who watch everything and, and they, they they see everything that happens. And so uh, James Gunn being James Gunn said, you know what? Okay, let's have him be a watcher. Let's just do it. I mean, yeah. this is our movie. 
Let's just do it. So sure enough, there's a scene in Guardians of the Galaxy, two scenes that uh-huh. that cement this popular fan theory where Stan Lee is just talking to other watchers in some planet somewhere about all of the things that he see. Of course that he has seen. Of course there is a gaping hole in this because he does say, and and then I was a UPS man because that actually happens in uh, Civil War, which technically happens um, after the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh-huh. Because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 happens immediately after Guardians of the Galaxy, which happens before Civil War. So technically, there's a plot hole there. But James Gunn being James Gunn, he said, Are you suggesting that Stan Lee has only pretended to be a UPS man once? <laughs> which is a good way to, to, to like... Uh, you know, kind of cover up that hole. Yeah. But originally in the script, he talked about originally in the script, apparently he was. And then one time I was a DJ at a strip club, which yeah. would have, which would have been Deadpool, which would have been the first time ever that a Marvel cinematic universe movie recognized a Sony pictures movie. Yeah. What are you doing? But anyway, this is a popular fan theory that has been proven True and yes, and, of- I, and I'm really glad they did it because when I heard about the fan theory, I was like, "That's that's perfect. That's absolutely yeah. perfect." You know, do it. Um, I, I still wish Jar Jar Binks was uh, an evil Sith Lord. I do. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of fan theories, I have a crazy fan theory of my own about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Yeah. There is one part of this movie that always um, struck me as odd. Yes. And I know that I'm being a stickler here, but there's a part of this film that I always thought was bizarre and that I couldn't wrap my head around. In the beginning of the film, in the opening credits, they're fighting this giant space monster... But Groot is baby Groot is more concerned with putting on music. He puts on the music and he starts dancing. He's yeah. dancing around and eventually he's dancing so much that he bounces into the camera. Yes. That tells me my film knowledge tells me that the camera is a character in this film now. Yes. Which leads me to start thinking, wait a second, how is the camera a character in this film? How is it possible that I am literally a character in this film? I am confused by that. How does Groot bounce into the camera that's watching all of this? How is this possible? How is there any way that this could be a thing? Like a, I, So suddenly everyone else is watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and I'm trying to justify Groot bouncing into the camera. Yes. And, like, and it just stuck with me through the rest of the film. It wasn't until the ending where David Hasselhoff, during the credits, starts singing a song about the Guardians of the Galaxy that I came up with a theory. Yes, okay. The David Hasselhoff sung song that plays during the end credits seems to me to be some alien version of David Hasselhoff or hell. It wouldn't surprise me if some alien race said, you know who we like David Hasselhoff. And then David Hasselhoff flies into space because there's another group that likes his music. (laughs) It wouldn't surprise me if that song was written by David Hasselhoff, but let's just say a David Hasselhoff like character is out there in space somewhere. And as ego says, There is not like an alien in the planet who hasn't heard of the legend of Star-Lord. Yes. So what if Star-Lord and the Guardians of the Galaxy have obviously become so popular that uh, famous alien musicians are writing cheesy songs or ballads about him? Number one. Yeah. What if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a reality show? 
This is the way that I justified that opening scene in my mind. Groot bounces into a camera. How is that possible? Well, if Gar- the Guardians of the Galaxy have become such a popular legend that they're writing songs about them, it wouldn't surprise me if Rocket, who is so desperate for money in like the next uh, like score, yeah. to say, you want to learn about the Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, hey, I could tell you about them. Who wants some money? I can get you the the inside scoop. So in my mind, Rocket has cameras. That makes sense. Rocket has cameras that are following the Guardians of the Galaxy all around. Well, kind of like Peter Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. like like some sort of like invisible drones or some sort of tiny minuscule cameras yeah. that are just following them everywhere recording everything that they do for their fans out there in space Mm -hmm. yeah and it would be it would be in some kind of a store a web store or something like that and you can get actual footage of guardians of the galaxy battles uh and you can also get a lunchbox and t-shirts and there are action figures yes yeah it would be a very rocket thing to do and unbeknownst to all of the other members of the Guardians of the Galaxy, they have like five or ten cameras that are following them at all times. Yeah. So, which is why you get all these different camera angles when you're watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is all a reality show you are watching. <laughs> I like that theory. I think it's a pretty damn good theory, and that's how I that's what I came up with to justify that tiny scene in the opening credits. Well, you need to write a a, a blog post about that or a Facebook status. You know, and get yeah. it out there. Yeah, get it out there. I wanna talk about the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two because I love it and it pisses me the fuck off. Okay. Guardian, the first Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack uh, made the record books. It was the first soundtrack to ever hit number one on the Billboard Top 100 charts while also not featuring any original music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every single solitary song in the first Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack had been released before. Yeah. And that had never been done in a number one soundtrack ever. There was always a new song. Even Pulp Fiction had a cover of frickin' Girl, You'll Be a Woman soon. Mm-hmm. But never had they had someone released a soundtrack that was all just old songs. And people said, oh, this is a first. This is a record. This is the first time that's ever happened. And in my mind, I said, yeah. And the only movie that'll ever beat that is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But God damn it. David Hasselhoff ruined it (laughs) with his weird alien ballad to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Although I will say this about the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Number one, I have never heard the song Wham Bam Shang-A-Lang in my life. And now this is my favorite song in the world. Which, Which scene was that? Um... Where they're fighting Ego on the planet, and suddenly the the entire Sovereign fleet comes to stop them, and the and and Kirk sees them all appear, uh-huh. and as they're appearing, ready to attack the living planet, it, like Kirk is just there, shocked, and Wham Bam Shang Alang is playing super loud. Okay. It's a ridiculous song, and I've never heard it before, but now it's my favorite song in the world. There were a few songs in this one that I had never heard before. Oh, yeah. Like, I had never heard Lakeshore Drive before. Which, which for me, made it a little less fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because what was fun about the music was the O factor, you know? Yeah. It's just like, oh, I remember this song. Yeah. But that might not be entirely um, that might not be entirely James Gunn's fault. Yeah, because there. Have you heard of the movie Baby Driver? I have heard of it. Yeah. Okay. 
know nothing else about it. It's a recent film. It's directed by Edgar Wright, so um, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. And it's starring um, Kevin Spacey, Jamie Foxx, and a bunch of other people that I don't know. But, the oh, John Hamm. It focuses on this young guy, and technically he's the baby driver. Baby is the name of Kevin Spacey's crime boss. Okay. And Baby Driver is the name of his driver who drives everywhere. He's a like a getaway driver. Yes. And it's your typical crime film of this guy trying to get out of the life. Oh, but one last score, and the score is doomed to fail, and there's all this trouble. It's your typical crime, well-written twists and turns crime drama. But the real amazing part is the driver, baby driver, the star of the film, the young man, he has like tinnitus Mm -hmm. or something to that effect, some sort of disease that causes a constant ringing in his ear. This is like the hook of the film. So he always has earbuds in his ear and he's always listening to music to drown out the sound in his ears. Okay. So... His entire life has a soundtrack. Oh, nice. So throughout the entire film, there are these scenes and these getaway scenes and these action scenes that are soundtracked by some of the greatest songs ever. Really? All right. Yeah. I want to see this film only for the soundtrack. There's actually a, there's actually a young MC song in it. Uh, 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 A Pope on film favorite. Yeah. So um, James Gunn heard about the movie Baby Driver. And one day, he, you know, he's working in post-production on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And he's like, fuck it. I'm going to call Edgar. Yeah. And he, he gets his phone. Beep, 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 beep. Edgar Wright. Hey, it's uh, James Gunn. Um, so I'm working on Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You're working on this Baby Driver film. Um, maybe we should compare notes. Yeah. And they're both like, oh, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah, no, I've got a list right in front of me of the songs that that I want to use. And uh, do you have a list of the songs you want to use? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, How about we each name a song and we'll tell each other if that's a song we want to use. Okay. (laughs) And they both got together and Edgar Wright is like, yes, I want to use this classic song. And James Gunn is like, oh, no, I don't I'm not I'm not planning on using that one. And James Gunn says, "Okay, I want to use this classic song. And Edgar Wright goes, oh, wait, no, I I want to use that one. Yeah. And Edgar Wright's like, "Okay, I won't use that one. You can use that one. But I do want to use this song. And Edgar Wright goes, oh, I wanted to use that one. You can have it. Okay. Like I really appreciate Edgar Wright and James Gunn. Because I can't think of any two other directors that would be like, instead of doing the studios and getting angry and hating each other, let's just call each other directly and air this shit out. Yeah. I can't think of any two other directors who would actually do that. You know? Yeah, instead of it being a bitchy fight and variety headlines. Yeah. So Trouble on the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 set. Yeah. So there's a possibility that there were a few better songs they were going to use, but Edgar Wright had them as well. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So the lack of of more big-name songs in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 soundtrack may or may not be the director of Scott Pilgrim's fault. (laughs) So that's interesting. I keep wanting to see Baby Driver. The soundtrack is supposed to be fucking amazing. Possibly a mashup one day. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Like we'll try to guess what song should have been in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, and that reminds me. That reminds me. I'm. I don't think I've mentioned this in the podcast before, but I've been thinking about this nonstop. Um, Taiki Wakanda Waka Waka, whatever his name is, the yeah. director of What We Do in the Shadows, and the upcoming director of uh. Uh, Thor of uh, Thor Ragnarok. Right. He announced it, it was like Freddie Mercury's birthday or like the day of his death or something like that. And he did this uh, Instagram post. Apparently, I follow him on Instagram too. 
And he was mentioning that, uh, oh, uh, he, he, oh uh, he was a genius and he was a visionary and he will be missed. And of course, as I've said to everyone in my cast, if he was still alive, I definitely would have asked him to do all the music for Thor Ragnarok. Oh. And that makes so much sense because all the previews I've seen for Thor Ragnarok are neon and colorful and bright. And so now every time I see a preview for Thor Ragnarok in my head, what I'm hearing is do, 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 Thor! He saved every one of us. Because apparently that's what the director was going for. Yeah. Thor! And also the Incredible Hulk. So that's what he's going for in this film. And I love that. They have just, they they just did such good music for such bad movies. Oh, absolutely. The Highlander soundtrack is great. (laughs) Yeah. Fucking Highlander. Yeah. Fucking Highlander. And then Highlander. Why is Highlander still around, man? Only the first movie was good. Are you kidding me? The third film was great. With Edge? Yeah, because of Edge. (laughs) Fucking Edge was in it. That's so weird. Yeah. Fucking edge. <laughs> so so that's all I have for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Do you have anything else? Uh I don't think so. I just want a million more of these movies. Yeah. Uh, I, I am I'm a bit more concerned about the cast changes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because then it's a different movie and I, I don't know if yeah. I would care. Yeah. They would have to I'm win not, me back. Yeah, I'm not doing highly detailed plot synopsis for every movie to save time and sanity. Yes. But for special ones, I will. Special ones like next week. So, Bunny. Yes. Let's talk about next week. Okay. Okay. There have been times in the history of the Pope on Film podcast. I've been living in fear of this the whole episode. Go ahead. D- yeah, you absolutely should. Uh, there are there have been times in the history of the Pope on Film podcast where I have found a movie. I have found a movie available and I said, "We have to do this next." Okay. And there have been times in which you have Oh my god, Steve, I I, I found a copy of blank. We have to do this film. Okay. We have both done this. It has been a two-way street. Yes. Okay. But. I hope you understand the importance of this. Okay. The gravitas of this situation. Okay. Natasha. Found a movie. And we have to do it for the next episode. Okay. I hope you realize the severity of this situation. <laughs> this the last a time, the last time this happened, it happened to Jane. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah. This, this isn't a film that I found. This isn't a film that you found. This is a film that 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 Natasha has for. Oh my God, she's running at me. Don't attack me. Oh my god, she's so excited. It's so bad, it's good! Okay. Natasha has been asking me for like a year or two. No, no, like about, a year a, about a year. To look for this one film, and I keep looking for it, and I keep not finding it. And she's like, can you look for Blank again? It's like, I looked for it before, I'll try to look for it again. Yeah, so, no, sorry, I can't find it. So the other day, she asked me again, hey, can you look for Blank? And I'm like, okay, I'll look for it one more time. And as it turns out, I did happen to accidentally uh, stumble upon a copy of the film on YouTube in plain sight. That I think the reason why it has escaped from the copyright um, mafia of YouTube is because it has Spanish subtitles. Okay. But it is on YouTube. It is there. It is free. 
It is a sci-fi film. It is a sci-fi original movie. It uh-huh. is starring Misha Collins from Supernatural. Okay. And it is called The Stonehenge Apocalypse. Stonehenge Apocalypse. It is so bad! Oh, I love it! I watched You, you like, just orgasm, didn't you? I watched like a minute of the film. Seriously. And even I was like, there was funny. there was God, squealing. Like wait, wait a second, wait a second. We have to handle this first. There was squealing, and then there was a period of silence, and then there was an eruption. <laughs> Five minutes into this film, and I'm just like, Steve, Steve, come here. You have to see this. Oh my god, it's so bad, buddy. It is so good. I yeah. love it. It's so okay, good. please send me the link. What is this called? Absolutely. Stonehenge Apocalypse. Stonehenge Apocalypse, starring a supernatural dude. Misha Collins, thank you very much. Which brother is he? He's not the brother, he's the angel. He's my angel. He's the angel, Castiel. (laughs) You may or may not be fucking one of them. It's unclear. Nah, we're pretty sure he's fucking Dean. Okay. Stonehenge Apocalypse. Stonehenge Apocalypse. 12 spoilers. Yeah, don't give any supernatural spoilers. I'm sure. 